Hi, Shader Tina here once again from shortmetina.com with my daily recap. Uh, today is Monday. Happy Monday. Well, not so happy the markets are selling off, but we'll get to that in a few. But happy Monday. Hopefully you had an awesome and enjoyable weekend. I know I sure did. Uh, I went to a drag bunch in the city on Monday, uh, not Monday, on Sunday, yesterday. Uh, it was pretty awesome. I think I had a little bit too many mimosas, but that's neither here nor there anyway so let's jump into a recap of the overall market right now what you're looking at is the s p 500 the spy it's a daily chart you know i like my daily charts uh, we can say going back to around uh let's go all the way back to january of 2018 i'll kind of paint a picture for you of what i see now take note that right now it's around 2:22 uh eastern time so the markets are still open so the data that you're seeing whenever i decide to upload it uh may be a di uh, might reflect differently than ac the actual closing price right so just take note i can't imagine the markets like taking who knows i can't imagine it taking another five or six percent tumble from this point until closing but you never know but again just take note of uh that difference so if you're new to this channel, all of this will be new to you. But if you've been following me along, I want to say for the last year and a half or so, even if you started following me, let's say towards the ending of 2019, some of this stuff that I'm about to say should be familiar. Anyway, again, SPY daily chart uh, dating back to 2018. We finally, we made several attempts to break through this uh, resistance level of around uh, 295 that dates back to around uh, 2018. So it took us about... One could say it took us a little over a year to finally actually break through and to begin trending up. But let's look or let's measure the percentage gain from when we actually bottom out in 2018. You remember that super crash where the market pulled back around 25 percent late 2018? Well, we bottomed out again December of 2018 the SPY hitting a low of around 240, and we rallied all the way up to the most recent high of around 339 before topping out. Now that percentage increase from this low to this high is around 44%. That's actually awesome, think about it. 44% gain in the S&P or in the markets in under two years time, that's an amazing gain. Now, I so the market topping out at 340 should not have been new to you because towards the ending of 2019, beginning of 2020, I said, well, the market should top out around uh, 3.30, right? And so we kind of, the market did in many ways, uh, had a hard time cracking 3.30. We kind of did that, went to 3.30, uh, 3.40 and then pulled back. So yesterday, what I said to uh, folks that are subscribed uh, to our premium membership, I asked them qu this question, more like rhetorical, because I think I was actually stating it, right? I said, are we starting another period of consolidation after this huge uptrend here, this 45% uptrend? And I kind of think that we are. And this pullback here of around 3-4% uh, is kind of giving me perhaps we are now in a new range what is that range? If it is a new range or consolidation period that we're starting after this huge run up, we can say the lower end is around 320, the upper end is around uh, 340. And I'm going to put a question mark there because I'm going to take note. If it is a range, the range is, in my opinion, relatively tight. Anyway, so it looks like we're pulling back a little bit more. We're trading uh, very close to session lows of around uh, 321, babbling a little bit. So let me just kind of like bring it home for you. All right. So the SPY from 2018 to like say 2019 uh 295 to 300 was that resistance level the market had a hard time breaking through that we finally did that towards the ending of 2019 and then we went on to put up another 30 points or so in the market topped out at 340 and today will open up and the market is down like three, four percent. Don't panic. I wouldn't panic. Why? You can see here, if you go back to, again, around December of 2019, it looks like there's some support at that 320 level. And if the market is about to once again be range bound, I think that's relatively healthy again, because we had this 44 percent um, up, uh, this 44 percent uptake from December 2018 lows to the most recent high in 2020. And also to take note that we did go short in the premium member community. We went short, I want to say at the beginning of 2020. And when the market was grinding high, I'm pretty sure it looked like a foolish short to a lot of my members. And even when I was uh, uploading YouTube videos saying that the market should sort of top out around 3.30, it probably looked ridiculous to you as, a, as the audience as well. But 
you know, not to say last laugh, there is no last laugh, but now that, you know, the the market is actually down around three to 4%, we're finally seeing that short materialize. And more than likely, right, uh, if 320 is support, you'll probably get a bounce there or probably overshoot it a little bit and then finally get a, a bounce. I can't see it getting back to 300, but you never know. That's my long take on the SPY. What else? All right, so you have the IWM daily chart uh, really quickly. Dating back to 2017, another range bound. We finally broke through, ending of 2019. Approached at 173, all-time high resistance once again, and then we pulled back. But if you can see once again, we are pulling back to that area that was once resistance of around uh, 160. Now it should serve as support, or it has served as support, I want to say since the ending of 2019, beginning of 2020. See all that to say, more than likely we should get a bounce around that 160 level, right? Let me take this away. You can see it right here. Um, 160, one, you see here, presenting resistance or presenting, we can say, the market had a hard time getting above that 160. We tried here, couldn't do it, tried here, couldn't do it. Finally did it, uh, broke, you know, came crashing down December 2018, tried again, we tried to penetrate 160. We tried that for a while, finally did it, and now 160 is acting as support, right? So even if uh, we pull back some more, wake up tomorrow, the market is down another few percentage points, it should not go too far, in my opinion, below 160 if the charts are to tell us anything, all right? Hope that makes sense. Comment in the comment section. Let me know if it does. Uh, and so I'm actually going to like go really quickly and show some uh, stocks that you should be paying attention to. When the market pulls back through to 4%, don't get scared. Look at the, look for those stocks that you've always wanted to get in, but the valuation have been so high, right? Makes sense. So the share price has been really high. So I'll, I'll show you some that I think uh, are still worthy mentions. All right, we have Microsoft. I've actually been wanting to get into this for a very long time. It's off about 3%, a little bit more since topping out at around uh, 190. Sitting here at 172, it doesn't look bad, but I feel like perhaps it can come down some more Microsoft, the stock that I'm looking to get into. You should pay attention to that as well. Disney, I'm still in Disney, and I still like it. The fact that it's coming down somewhere, you can see here, uh, support right there around, uh, let's say, 127. Uh, that would be a decent area to, in my opinion, go long. I like Disney. What else? Apple. Again, for me sitting here at 300, uh, Apple still is very, very rich in my opinion, too rich for my blood, but I am paying attention to it. It's down 4%. I like to see it pull back some more, but that's a stock you might want to consider. Obviously, Zynga, I will never stop talking about Zynga. Why? Even in this market where the market is down about 4%, right? Zynga obviously follows suit. Most stocks do. When the market is down, chances are your individual stocks will be down as well. It's off about 1.47%, uh, but it's still trading in the, in the sevens, right? So that tells me we have a real shot at hitting $8 for Zynga, right? You would think that it would be plummeted a lot more, but it's not. What else? Um... Uh, what else? Yeah, so PM, uh, we actually took a short in this stock. Uh, um, I want to say we were in and out of this uh, trade. We took a short, uh, then we ended up closing it because the company reported earnings. So we had like a quick four or five percent gain on that. Then we most recently, I think last week, we put the short on once more. And it's so funny, like just based on price action, the fact that it continues to trade up around that resistance level, I stated to my premium members, like, I think that the stock actually wants to go higher, but I have this thing where it's like, once you have a game plan set out, especially if, you know, it, it makes sense, just allow your stops to take you out of your positions. I don't like to just take myself out of a position. I like our stops to take us out of a position, and I'm glad uh, that I do that because this is prime example. Had I have, had I have just taken us out the position, we would have uh, missed out on this 4% decline on this uh, particular short. So consider PM. Uh, it was another way we sort of hedged in, uh, in the premium member community again being short the markets and also being short uh, some stocks like PM. So put that on your watch list and what else? Let's wrap it up with a penny stock. All right, so we're gonna wrap it up. We took our NNVC daily chart is up about uh, 40% on the day here. I see a, not close, but here I see a price. I hope I wasn't saying close with the others. Anyway, see a price point of 927 again up 40% uh, on the day, the high clocked in at 1090. So we're off a bit from session highs. Uh, and I believe that this stock is up because the company is actually working on uh, treatment uh, for this strain of the coronavirus. And you can see it here, it's just been volatile or it's been essentially like in play 
uh, for the most part, since coronavirus has been uh, dominating the news cycles. You can see it right here. Let me just uh, highlight it for you here. You can see here, stock has been extremely volatile. So um, again, not really my cup of tea because I'm not, it's just not necessarily a stock I'd want to play. But if you want to play it, it's in play for you. Obviously, you just want to pay attention to session highs and lows, right? Obviously, if um, the closer we trade up to session highs, that's actually a good sign. Uh, the rally will continue. Um, if we trade down low, uh, if we trade down close to session lows, that says for the most part, in my opinion, then the stock may just uh, sell off. So right now, it's hard to gauge what the market wants to do because there's still about an hour and 30 minutes left of trading. So I can't really make a call right now on this one. You see here, look, we just went from like 920 something to 904 up about 36%. But just based on what I'm seeing now, it looks like it's drifting uh, lower, right? Because today's uh, low clocked in at 855. So we're trading at this point close to session lows. So that tells me that the um, it, we may just get a sell off heading into tomorrow, just based on what I'm seeing now. All right. Hope that makes sense. Comment in the comment section and let me know. Uh, two things. One, I'm actually going to be away this week. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be doing daily videos because I'm on vacation, vacation for real. Um, I'm gonna take my recording equipment, but um, again, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do daily videos. I may just do it once for the week, or I probably won't do any until I come back, which will be in about a week's time, around seven days or so, all right? I have not made up my mind on that as of yet, but just kinda wanna put it out there. So if you don't see me upload a video uh, tomorrow, like everything is okay, I'm just kinda taking it easy because I'm on vacation, all right? Um, all right, so let's cap it there. Tina here once again from shortmetina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of that video, do two things for, or three rather, I said two. Do three things for me. One, comment in the comment section. Let me know what did you think about my analysis. Are you short the, are you short the markets? Did you get caught out there again? Comment in the comment section. Let me know too. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. So I do videos every single day except for potentially this week when I'm on vacation, I might not uh, upload any, but outside of that, I do videos every single day. So if you want to ensure that you don't miss any, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, lastly, uh, right now on our training website, we're hosting a free 14 day trading course where I talk about some of the important things I've learned trading the stock market close to 20 years, a very long time. I've learned um, some things. So, uh, a lot of things which made me feel comfortable shorting the market uh, in the beginning of 2019, uh, why I was comfortable uh, shorting PM and some other things. So again, timely lessons. If you're interested, definitely head on over to our website, shortmetina.com. Sign up, become a member. Thank you for listening. And as always, thank you for the support. Uh, I will talk to you maybe tomorrow, but definitely soon. All right, keep you posted. Enjoy the rest of your day.